Welcome to a new episode of Heart Matters. I'm Wayne Quackabush, your host, and today we're on location. And uh, Gina Croce has generously had us come to her studio somewhere in Massachusetts. And thank you for having us and welcome to the show. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. And so you are what by any standards would be considered a world, world-class world watercolorist. I know you're going to hedge that. <laughs> Thank <at> you. <laughs> and you've shown all over the world and you're involved with all sorts of different organizations and we're here to look at uh, your work and you want to tell us how you got started in the arts? I actually got started very young as a teenager. I painted once a year for 30 years. Never painted much at all. And since moving here to Massachusetts, I've um, pretty much started painting every day. And that's what I do now. I teach. I teach via Zoom. I teach in my studio here. Um, I teach on location uh, for workshops and things. Mm -hmm. And pretty much paint every day. So that's all I do now. And I met you because you showed your work at the Portsmouth Arts Guild. I did. And uh, again, you've shown um, your work everywhere. What organizations are you involved with? Um, not many, really. I pretty much stay to myself. I was the president of the International Watercolor Society of the okay. United States, which I've since resigned from, mm-hmm. which is a wonderful organization. I just was so busy with teaching and painting, I just didn't have time for it anymore, so I passed it on to somebody else. And you spend many um, hours teaching and painting. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. You want to start uh, talking about some of the, or showing some of the work that you have? Sure, you want to see some? Um, This is a recent painting that I just did from a um, place in Tiverton, Rhode Island. It's called The Groundswell, and it's a restaurant, and they have this truck outside, which is an advertisement. Okay. Um, You've got to hold it up, so... So, I... Is that all right? Yep. So, I had taken a photo of it um, after I had done a a plein air event there and came home and painted it, and voila, ten minutes later, the owner saw it and bought it, so... Anyway, so that happens quite often. Uh huh. Um, this is one I just was at the where I'm watercolor society at Slater Park and thought that those ducks were really cute, so I decided to make a little painting of them. Now, do you usually work from photographs? I always work from photographs. Yeah, pretty much. Um, not really a plein air painter. I do it on occasion, but I'm a studio painter. I take photos, I edit them, um, crop them to where I think they look pretty, and then. Work from We're going to actually kind of look at uh, your process a little bit in a bit. In, sure. But I wanted to um, kind of discuss uh, the whole photography process uh, mm-hmm. and how you work from it. Because you don't just take a picture and have it printed. You, you are using all sorts of technology because you have your iPad. Right. And you're able to zoom in on things and well, get the Well, I usually, like if I'm going to do a still life, I'll usually take 200 pictures in different mm-hmm. setups, different, I'll change the lighting. Um, when I'm done, then I'll kind of go through them, the ones that appeal to me the most, and I'll start to edit and crop until I kind of get them the way I want them before I even start painting. And then there's a lot of imagination involved too. Yeah, like for instance, the one with my, stuff. with my, I do, I do, <laughs> the one with my self portrait that I put all the hummingbirds around yeah, me. Absolutely, um, you know, it's it's no fun if they're normal. So, right. Anyway, like my soup one, which I'll show you in a little while. Right. It's in the drawer. It adds life. Yeah, I, I like to add life to things that mm-hmm. actually aren't there, and I'll show you that in a few of these. This was one from Daniel Hall, pro in a uh, Boston. Boston. Yep. So, again, it's a still, I mean, it's a landscape, not normally my thing, but obviously. Now, do you have any preference of uh, subject matter? I love painting people, but I kind of paint everything. Yeah. I I would be bored if I only painted one subject matter. Well, we're looking at portraits, and we're looking at landscapes, we're Mm -hmm. looking at buildings. um, A little bit of everything, Again, we're going to give a little tour of your studio in a bit. So, and then this is from Connecticut, from that sunflower farm, farm, where they sell the flowers for Make-A-Wish. Um, I just thought it was beautiful, so decided to try and paint all that craziness. So, just fun and interesting. Now, do you have any favorite uh, painters? Anybody that you uh, are inspired by? <sighs> well, so many. Um, it's okay to name names. 
trying to think of my favorite's name, and I can't think of his name. Give I know, me a minute the, and I know the Wyeths, me. right? Any of the Wyeths? Mm, yeah. Um, give me a minute. I'll think about it. Okay. Okay, this is from Wickford, Rhode Island. And again, you say I like to make things up. This little bird wasn't here. This little man wasn't here. You made up the. Uh, I, you made up the little man. I made up the little man. I made up the bird. It just. I. I love the photo. It just needed life, so I give it life. Now, when you come in and you're starting to do these, uh, what are they? Lobster cages, mm -hmm. lobster, lobster pots. Lobster pots. Um, do you do you kind of put down a base color, and then come in and define the form with the squares? I actually use masking fluid on every little line, paint the inside take off the masking fluid and then paint the yellow. And how do you keep the inside colors from um, running? Once they're dry, they won't run. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Once they're dry, they're fine. Yep. Now, this I, I want one, you to reveal all your secrets. Because I, I always have questions. I always, whenever I, I always give away all my whenever secrets. Whenever I look at your stuff, I'm like, how does she get the detail there. Masking fluid is my friend. A lot of people don't like it. I happen to love it, which is another reason why I like to paint in my studio as opposed to outside because I like to plan. Like for instance, this one. I made limoncello and then I decided to do a limoncello painting. First and of all, you have to describe to us what limoncello is. Limoncello is a liqueur. It's actually Italian. Mm -hmm. I had bought this bottle in Rome. Actually, my sister had brought me this bottle home um, and it was empty. So I decided to make some, which is made from the um, rind of the lemon, the, the zest, mm -hmm. and you put it into moonshine and you let it sit for a month. And oh, it turns sweet. into this really sweet lemony, oh, and then you add simple syrup. So it's a very sweet lemon after dinner drink the Italians love. I think I've experienced something that was called apple pie that must be like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the fan I had bought when I was in Sorrento. And again, this is all white masking fluid. I do not use white paint. I don't use black paint either. This is a mixture of different colors to make black. So how do you get the mask off? Okay, because we're just, we're gonna talk about how, if you've never painted before, how, you, how you, would you describe the mask, the mask process? I use this peachy colored masking fluid because I like it because I can see where I put it. In watercolor, I do not use white paint. So whenever you want white, I put masking fluid and here's an example of a painting that I was just working on. Right. Obviously, I'm not finished. I used masking fluid on his mustache and on his hair so that I could paint all this dark behind him. And when I'm done, in his skin tone, and when I rub it off, it leaves me with the white. Then mm -hmm. I can go in and do my details later, right. which I still will. Over here, I have a frame not finished in his shoulder and his hand. If I want to really do some washes over this, I don't want to get masking fluid on his hand. So I will take my masking fluid in my little no, cup. No, you don't want to get paint on his head. I mean, you, can't do, you are putting paint. masking I'm fluid. I'm sorry. So in here I have a little bit of... Um, we saw you put soap. Liquid dish soap. Yep. I fill my brush with it all the way up to the ferrule. This will keep the brush from turning hard. I've had some of these brushes for five years. Mm. And I wash them out and I use them over and over. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to lay that off. I'm going to dip my brush in. And I'm going to very carefully... Going you're, to cover you're covering his fingers. his fingers. So this way, when I want to paint more color on this, I don't have to be careful because when I rub this off later, it will be nice and white. And I do have some bubbles in here, so it's a little bit of a pain. I should have waited a minute, but for the sake of time, so I'm, smooth out the bubbles with the brush. Yeah, a little bit. I'm still going to be careful around his hand, even though I put masking fluid on it. Mm. I don't have to worry so much about down here. I'm pretty much just going to do his fingers. This will dry. This particular brand dries in about five minutes maximum. So I don't have to wait very long to get started. So I just want to make sure I cover this finger really nicely. And the tip of that one. And that's about all I'm going to do for that. So like I said, this will dry in about five. And I think I'm going to just leave it at that. That's enough on that. Okay. Um, I am not, I don't use it for everything. I probably should have masked off this little white piece. Instead, I just painted around it, mm -hmm. but it could be done. I could have masked his teeth. I just didn't because I'm a very meticulous slow painter. Well, you also trust yourself too. You know what your capabilities right. are. So now this is done. I need to wash my brush right away or this will harden and you have to throw it away. There's no way to get it out, right. but I will do that. Okay. This is my little magic tool that is probably 30 years old, which used to be square. 
When this is dry, this will just rub and lift this right off. So that's like an eraser? It's it's no, it's actually a piece of rubber. Okay. But it um No, oh, it's tough. It's tough. And it will lift it off without harming the paper. Wow. A lot of people come in and they use their fingers and they do this. Yeah. Not only are they gonna wear their fingers out if there's a lot of it, but you also you have oils and things on your yes, hands and you exactly could damage the sizing yep. of this paper because right. this is cotton rag and it's very delicate and paper. it can also repel the paint that you put on later right if you it put could oil. if you get oils on on yeah. it yes <clears throat> so i'm very careful about only using <clears throat> my little um mask made lifter so when that's dry i'll show you how that works i'll even put a wash behind it okay so we can see how that works okay, okay? All right, so Jeannie, you're going to share some more artwork. Yep, now. Wayne wanted a few more photos, so we just raided my big cabinet and grabbed yep. some work out of the drawer. So and you get to see the artwork <clears throat> on the actual paper, and um, yep, then just you know, unframed and unmatted. And, unframed, and unmatted. This is just, just a big pile, just, and grab... and it's full rawness. <laughs> it's full so rawness. To speak. So this is actually um, Amalfi, in Italy. Um, I took this from a boat. We hired a boat for a day, few years ago. Yeah. And just kind of fun, different, bright. Um, this one, this is my friend's grandson and his little girlfriend. I did it for a gift that I haven't given her yet. I love to do portraits, as you can tell. Well, we just ruined the surprise. Oh, I told her about it. She saw it on Facebook. <laughs> she just hasn't gotten it yet. <clears throat> this is my little eight inch mannequin that I decided to blow up to a full sheet. And I called this one We. Like now, these what size are plain. we looking at here? We're this is a full sheet of watercolor paper, which is 22 by 30. Okay, so that's a big fun painting. This guy, he's actually a local country singer. He's actually singing in Nashville a lot now. And he was actually playing at a party I went to in Providence last year. And I took his picture, painted it, and didn't even know who he was at the time. So, anyway. Have so, you shown it to him? I have. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. Yeah, this is from the Museum of Fine <coughs> Arts. There's a glass installation that actually has like one row of bottles, but because of the mirrors, it has that affinity effect. So I just thought it'd be something fun to play with and see if I could recreate that in paint. So you're really kind of drawn to the incredible detail in your subjects. Mm -hmm. Like I see, starting to see a pattern of, of uh, light play and... and um, different objects uh, that you emphasize and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and reflections your, your especially deep, deep yeah. focus mm -hmm. on things now this one I was in again in Amalfi I was up at a church looking down into an alleyway and saw these women eating their pizza which I thought was kind of cute so head down view um, same thing here um, in Italy again looking down at these people sunbathing um, on these on these patios and somehow I grabbed three, these three lovely people and decided they needed to be painted. You see, that one you could have painted upside down. That one I probably could have. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it matters which way this one goes. But And this is a little portrait I did, actually for a workshop with Frida Cajo. And most people know Frida. She's a Mexican artist um, back in the, what, 40s? Yep, uh-huh. Anyway, so she's a beautiful lady with a unibrow, so that's what makes her really unique. Makes me want to paint her. This is one of my beautiful grandsons in my swing in the backyard. Again, love my portraits and my grandchildren. And you're, look at, I mean, hold that up and, and let people see the, uh, the detail you put into the bark of the tree. Lots of colors, lots of purple, greens, there's pinks in there. I mean, it, you with that, you can almost use the term psychedelic. <laughs> you could. Or psycho. <laughs> no, no. Okay. This is definitely this is, a favorite. You had, I saw that. This is a fairly time. recent one. One of my students brought me a beautiful crystal oval vase. Mm -hmm. And she said, I want to see you do a still life with this. And I said, I can't put fruit. Everybody puts fruit. Oh, my God. Can't do fruit. Yeah, can't wait for So instead... This. I got my grandmother's antique silver ladle, put it in there, poured in some chicken noodle soup, added some crackers, and called this one he wanted a fancy dinner. So this is my husband's fancy dinner. Uh-huh. Okay. So, poor guy. Doesn't eat very well, but at least it was in a nice thing. So not only are you dealing with the, the solid labels, but then you're having fun with all of the wood grain on the tabletop. Yep. Wood and green, all the and detail. Crystal. 
and, and the crystal. Yeah, and I haven't painted crystal very much, so I thought it would be fun to tackle that. And the, the light so. play is amazing in that. Thank you. I mean, it's kind of almost reflected in the top of the can and the edge mm -hmm. of the can. Yeah, and a little bit on top of the cans here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was a very fun painting, and I kind of got a kick out of painting it, just because it's different. Well, I mean, even doing the lettering is hard in mm -hmm. watercolor. Yep, just use a little brush. Mm -hmm. By the way, masking fluid on the white ones. <laughs> Had to. You yep. could not, never paint around that and yeah. still get that form. Yeah. So there are times when it's very, very helpful to me. This one, I took a picture of this white rose and just thought it was gorgeous, but thought it'd be much prettier if it was painted on a full sheet size, which is, again, 22 by 30. Um, and it was just fun to paint because, again, we've got pinks and aquas and purples and all different colors mm -hmm. playing in there. Mm -hmm. um, these next two are actually from Rome, from the, um, the Fountain of Four Rivers. And these are, I guess, the river gods. This is one from an evening shot. Again, full sheet. I like to paint large. Okay, and then the mate to this one, which is on the other side, opposite him, which is in brighter light, is this little guy. So, quite a challenge, and again. Again, doing the water, too. There was a lot of psychedelicness in here that wasn't really there. Well, I mean, look at all of the flow that you have in the bottom there. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was fun. Mm -hmm. So. And this, uh, you, I can't believe that you did all of those with a little brush. Yep, little brush mm -hmm. at the end. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just um, building layers. Um, finding colors that aren't there and adding them. Yes. And this one, this is um, just a fun one from England where they hang these umbrellas on, over the street. And I just thought it was just such gorgeous colors. I did not actually take this photograph. Um, a friend of mine, Maureen, did. So I asked her if I could paint it because I thought it was gorgeous. It's so. almost abstract. It almost looks like flowers. It is a little bit abstract. And this is actually the frame of a bed. And they tied all these ribbons to it, which oh, yeah. is hanging overhead, sure. too. Sure, absolutely. So, it was just such a fun picture. I'd... And you had fun doing all those bricks. I certainly did. <laughs> that was the easy part. And my, again, back to Naples, my favorite place. <clears throat> I used to live in Naples when I was in high school. So this is kind of neat to me. So, so did you go all four years in Italy? No. Oh, okay. No. All right. Um, but we went back four years ago. We took my mom for her 80th birthday. Nice. So I took a lot of these photos, which is why, hence all my daily paintings. Yep. But these masks are very popular there, um, and I just absolutely love them. It says Napoli and all the little trampolines. I it was fun to paint and try and get that satin effect. Yes, yes. And yes. all the fun little, little bits in here. So, yeah, that was a really fun painting. Well, now it's time to look at some more artwork. Sure. And... and I might ask you to linger on some details. <laughs> okay. All right, so this one is my Easter painting. Um, I found this beautiful little teapot in an antique shop. Bought my favorite jelly beans. Of course, I eat the black ones first. But Black's the best. Black's the best. So just a fun little painting. Again, I used masking fluid on these white edges to keep them nice and white, and then add color later. Mm. That way I could paint all the stuff in behind it without messing up my clean edges. Sometimes I'll even mask this later after I've painted the pot to paint behind it. It doesn't hurt the paint. Right. So either way works. Yeah. Um, this was a fun one. I went to an antique shop and I found all these wonderful photos. And so I popped a bag of popcorn and found some old slides and some old transparencies and decided to paint a bunch of photos. So actually one of my favorite paintings. I don't know why. It's just kind of wacky. Different. Well, it, it you, you were talking about time traveling earlier from another painting, and that definitely has kind of that feel, yeah. yeah. And my mother actually thought that was me when I was four. It looks just <laughs> like me at the time because that was my haircut, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. My mother should be ashamed of herself. I like the lady at the party smoking, though. She's kind of funny. <laughs> you never know what you're going to find at a yep. thrift store. And if you notice, market. there's lots of other colors. There's purples, there's greens, and pinks, and aquas in the popcorn. Well, that makes sense. Just to give it some color and yeah. give it some fun. Um, yeah. I don't always Again, paint things. Again, it brings life to mm -hmm. it. Don't always paint things the colors they are. This is that um, seafood 
a shop down in Wickford, Rhode Island, in the marina there. Um, again, masking fluid to help me keep my whites white and these little masks and things. Yep. And everything else is just kind of wire floated my boat that day. No pun well, I don't know if you can see it from the camera, but there's a tiny little lobster there, and there's <laughs> all of these flags and guy wires. Hmm. You just can't imagine. Uh, what it would take to even paint a line like that. <laughs> <laughs> I do lots of lines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like detail. A lot of water, watercolors paint a little looser and more wet into wet. Yes. Um, the only time I do wet into wet mostly is when I'm doing a background or a sky or something. Well, yeah, I was just going like to say. Like here, this is wet into wet. So right. it gives me that fuzzy, hazy, um, kind of muted thing but you know you put some pinks in it so it looks like there's something happening back there so were you would you mask the stamens I would have masked those stamens okay. absolutely I did and um, mm -hmm. so you're doing a lot of dry brush then is what you're saying no no it's not dry brush okay I pretty much work in um, like a puzzle and I probably would do one petal yep. at a time so I'm stopping on this edge to keep the white Right. Okay, and then I... Now are you building up colors? Or a lot of times I do work in glazes. So mm -hmm. we'll initially we'll have like a pale pink and then I'll add some purples, add some blues to create the difference in colors. It takes a lot of judgment in order to not muddy the colors. You have to know It's what a colors. lot of pre-planning. Yeah, as you long have to as know you what know. colors you can build on top of other colors. I mean, I was at right? a workshop. Yeah, you do. You have to learn that. It's a process, but that's why I teach that. Yeah. So, and it's, it's really not that hard to learn. Um, it's just a little dedication. Right. So um, I was at a workshop one time, um, actually an artist retreat, and a friend of mine um, had bought these apples, and so she threw them all out on her vest, and found this just colander. So just a quick, simple little apple painting, kind of fun. Um, so again, subject matter, it, you know, anything that appeals to me that day is game. Did you master the highlights then? I did. Okay. You can actually see the hard edge on some of them. Yep, yep. And some I've softened. Well, it definitely yep. adds dimensionality to it and it, and it gives you a sense of light. It um, does. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so uh, anything <laughs> and everything. Here's a truck. Another truck. Again, it's just... Um, fun to paint, lots of rust. Of course, I had to mask all this grass before I could paint that truck. Because in watercolor, because it's transparent, I wouldn't be able to do it later. Well, something we haven't talked about is how you actually start with a blank sheet of paper. Are you doing a drawing underneath? I am doing a pencil drawing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes... And, and does the drawing go away? Do you ever erase it? Um, after I've could... drawn it, I take my kneaded eraser and I, I tap it or lightly rub it and take off a lot of the pencil. I can see it, but it's not visible from far away. And sometimes there's pencil lines that actually show and I don't care. Yeah. So I kind of like them. I think they had kind of character. I think you can see some well, structure in stuff. her. Yeah. So anyway, here's another one. The Sunflower Farm again. Again, the bees weren't there. You this one is too. Had to make up some bees yep. to give it some life because otherwise it's just, just crazy sunflowers. But again, there's a lot of negative painting done mm -hmm. in here. I didn't paint these leaves, I painted around them. Right. So it's, you know, there's I lots mean, of it's, techniques. It's simple, simple to say that you start from light to dark, right? Mostly. Mm. Mostly. <laughs> there are exceptions to every rule. Right. And I don't have any rules because I made them all up. No. So I mean, my rules are whatever I've made them up to be. This one, um, a good friend of mine, Arnie, I think you know Arnie. Um, a wonderful artist in Boston. He dared me to paint a wave because he said he never paint water. Oh, no. so yeah, that's always was, supposed to be a challenge for artists. That was my attempt at painting a wave. <clears throat> um, again, I did use masking fluid and some of these whites on the top. Mm -hmm. And down here, I just painted around the whites. It was just too complicated, and I had to make it up as I go. So, so that was my attempt at painting some rocks and waves. That was up to Beaver Tail. Yeah. So. Anyway, so that's that, Kyle. You know, so are we ready to move on to, are we going to talk about your appearances? Tell us a little bit about the 2021 National Watercolor Society show. 
Okay, that was the Round um, Watercolor Society <clears throat> um, at Slater Park. Right. And they have a national show every year. And this year I entered this we'll take a picture of painting that. behind me, which was this little right. girl. And I actually won first place. Mm -hmm. And you can see in my, my little booklet, mm -hmm. which was very exciting. And I got a beautiful blue ribbon. And then a friend of mine, it was, it was funny, um, a friend from high school in Italy back in the 70s, now lives in the area and he picked up this magazine recently. <laughs> And he took a picture of it and put it on Facebook and tagged me and said, did you know you were featured in this magazine? Which I did not know I was featured in this magazine. So that was kind of funny. You know, I, I still don't get that. I mean, how is your picture in there and it's about artists and did they not even mention you? They did. It oh. says first place winner. Oh, I see. Because um, it's a watercolor society yeah. show. So it's all Gina tied Croce together. won first place, right. yes. So when you went to these shows, you give them the right to <coughs> advertise, yeah, you know, with you. But anyway, so that was kind of a nice little, yeah, absolutely. A nice little nod, yep. and um, and of course they called it Strokes of Genius, which was totally embarrassing. But but that's me. Okay. I get embarrassed easily. I mean, it, it's an honor, so you know, shouldn't. Be it shy was an about honor. That. I was yeah. I was very proud of it. Absolutely. And I think he came in here and I was like, oh, this really needs to go darker. This is kind of in shadow. This is on his this side of him, and I want these little squares in between to be darker too. So this gives me the opportunity now, while this is drying, I'm going to do a little bit in here. So maybe I want this all really dark, because it's on this side of him, the light is coming this way. So I can come in, just do a little bit. I like those where they crisscross to be a little darker. And if I think it's too dark, I can just come in with a damp brush yep. and lift, lift a little up, back a little off. But I'm leaving it dark down here where it's in the shadow. Yep. Okay, so it just gives me the opportunity to play with these colors while they're still wet. Now, one of the things about using good watercolors and mm -hmm. really good paper is that you can work kind of almost over them again and the colors don't blend, don't lift at all, right? No, they don't lift and they're very transparent. Right. So, um, you know, and they're rich too. They're, they're very bright. rich. The, um, because of the pigments that they're using. The student grade paints have a lot of cheaper pigments and binders in them where this is more for pure pigment. Yeah. So you get very pure color very quickly. Yeah. So again, I'd have to darken all down here too, but I was just wasting some time sure. to let this dry. Yep. It has to be 100% dry though before I take this off. Mm -hmm. Like this lady up here. Um, you know, if you apply, if you, would you throw salt on it when it was wet? While it's super wet. Yep. And then once it's completely dry, which is usually overnight, then you wipe the salt off and it leaves a speckly texture. But then I glazed over most of that anyway. Right. So sometimes it's a combination of different techniques that sure. work together in order to make, you know, this type of a, of a texture. So there's a lot of different techniques going on. Now when you start a painting, you said that you kind of build it like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. Do you have any particular place you like to start, or you just start where you feel like it? Typically, it's my backgrounds. I, I always usually start with my backgrounds, and I usually build forward. Uh -huh. In this case, I did the background, the the background here, the floor, then I did the chair, and then I did the lady and the cats last. So you actually got dark quickly, or you came back and got dark? Probably did it first. It's been a year or two, but I'm sure I did that first. Um, I mean, I'm sure the chair was completely finished before I started her. Yeah. And again, it's just, this was all masked, every little flower. Well, Gina, I want to thank you once again for having us at your studio. And thank thanks you. for being on the show. It's been fun. Thank you very much. And join us okay. next time for another episode of Art Matters.